Hey guys, welcome back to Story Behind the Story. I'm your host, Ben Whitney. You haven't probably seen me before, but I'm the host to fill in for both John and Keegan, who could not host this week. And we have Abigail here with us today to tell us a little bit about a freshman who got scammed out of some money. So you want to give us some background on that? Yeah, so Darren Ross is a freshman at Northwest, and he fell to an email scam recently at the beginning of the month of October. He got an email saying that he had been selected to be a personal assistant to somebody who helped with the disabled. And Darren, being the good-hearted person he is, wanted to be a part of something like that. So he went about his week uh, weekend kind of fulfilling the roles and responsibilities he'd been asked to do. But there were steps along the process that seemed kind of fishy to him. Um, one of those being um, the way the messages were kind of auto-generated, so to speak. It didn't feel like he was getting real one-on-one uh communication with this person. This person only provided a photo ID, but there's no way to know if those are even valid anymore. And it was later found out that it was a stolen ID. Um, Ross actually reached out to someone at Career Services and they told him not to continue communication with this person, but Ross was really in need of the money and wanted to do quality work um, that could go on his resume. So he went ahead with it and by the following week on Monday morning, he got a call from his bank that he had overdrafted his account by $4,800. So unfortunately now that's on Darren to make up for the lost money and hopefully try to figure out who did this to him. Yeah, and you said that uh, he set up a GoFundMe to try to get people to help him out with that. Yeah, so he has a goal to reach $5,000, which would cover the $4,800 that um, he lost and help pay for some of the um, legal help he's getting from people at the Federal Trade Commission and Officer Martinez with the University Police Department. So I'm hopeful people will read the article and go to his GoFundMe and show him some love right now because he's going through a pretty hard time. So you said that he went to UPD, but it seemed like they can't really do much in this kind of a situation. So who, who can you really turn to to try to get help on this and, and what is that extent that UPD can, can go and try to help him out with this situation? So Ross reached out to Officer Martinez for assistance, and she uh, turned his case over to the Federal Trade Commission, which is the national security database for all scams. Um, and those people are responsible for taking scams that happen across the country, trying to find patterns and trying to find suspects. Um, so until the FTC either reaches out to Darren or Darren um, hires a larger legal team to help him, um, it's kind of in the hands of the FTC. Officer Martinez has done a lot of her own homework, though, to try to get him some answers. She's the one who found out the ID was stolen from Florida, and the man had no knowledge that his ID had been stolen, so that's becoming its own case right now. And the email traced back to California. So if you look at how the evidence stacks up, nothing is consistent, and these people were out to harm someone who just wanted mm -hmm. to do something good for the world. Yeah. How frequent does this kind of thing happen at Northwest? So according to Officer Martinez, she says these emails... Um, get reported at least once or twice a semester, if not more. Um, uh, Mr. Lehman with IT says the, the university spam filter does a pretty good job filtering these messages out, but it's still important to be aware before you share your private information. So if you're a student and you get something that you think might be a, a scam or a spam email, you're not sure, what should you do about that? Should you completely ignore it? Should you report it to someone at the university? Should you talk to someone? I definitely think you should reach out to UPD, and if you can, a contact with um, the IT department. Um, if you check out the story, you'll see layman's contact information there, his first and last name. Um, I also think it's important to maybe even share it with your friends so they know that it might be coming to them next. Um, that way we have a community of people who are looking out for each other so things like what happened to Ross don't happen again. All right, and how, how is uh, Darren feeling now that this is all kind of come and gone and how, how, is, he, how is he trucking through this? Darren described his initial feeling as devastated. I think now he's in more of a place of acceptance um, and just knows he's going to push ahead and do what he needs to do to get out of this tough spot that he's in. He's currently looking for a job, so if anyone knows anyone that's hiring, feel free to reach out to Darren or myself and we can try to help him out. Fantastic. Well, thanks for sitting down and, and talking this week, and thank you guys for joining us. We'll see you next week here on SBS.